Molecules dissolved in a solution are in constant random motion due to their kinetic energy. One result of this motion is that dissolved molecules become evenly distributed throughout the solution. This tendency of molecules to spread out is an example of diffusion. But how do these molecules come to be evenly distributed? Let's start with a beaker of plain water. What will happen if we now add a lump of sugar to the water? A lump of sugar is composed of many individual sugar molecules, and even as a solid lump, the individual sugar molecules are in motion. When the lump is dropped into the water, it begins to dissolve. Individual sugar molecules move randomly and constantly from the area where they are common to the area where they are scarce. This type of motion, when molecules move from areas of their higher concentration to areas of their lower concentration, is called diffusion. Diffusion continues until all the sugar molecules become evenly dispersed throughout the beaker. The rate of diffusion is affected by temperature, size of molecules, and the steepness of the concentration gradient. Although not specifically shown in this animation, this is one of the processes whereby materials are exchanged between a cell and its environment. Diffusion is the net movement of molecules down a concentration gradient. This process allows small molecules, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, to cross the plasma membrane. Most polar molecules, such as sugars and proteins, cannot freely cross this lipid membrane. Although water molecules are polar, they are small enough to pass through the membrane freely. This special case of diffusion that involves the movement of water molecules across a membrane is called osmosis. If a molecule, such as urea, is added to one side of a membrane, it will not be able to diffuse across the membrane because it is both large and polar. Because of its polar nature, it will interact with other polar molecules, such as the water. This interaction reduces the number of free water molecules on the right-hand side. With fewer free water molecules on the right-hand side, there is now a net movement of water molecules down their concentration gradient to the side with the urea molecules. Because more water molecules are moving into this area than are leaving, the water level on the right side will rise. If the osmotic concentrations of two solutions are equal, the solutions are isotonic. However, when the solutions have unequal osmotic concentrations, the solution with the higher concentration of solutes is hypertonic, and the solution with the lower concentration of solutes is hypotonic. In the process known as facilitated diffusion, a special carrier protein with a central channel acts as a selective corridor which helps molecules move across the membrane. These special carrier molecules that form the protein channel bind only to a specific molecule, such as a particular sugar or amino acid. Once the molecule binds to the carrier protein, this protein helps or facilitates the diffusion process by changing shape and moving the molecule down its concentration gradient through the membrane into the cell where it is released. Facilitated diffusion is similar to simple diffusion in that both involve movement of molecules down their concentration gradient and this movement is carried out without any input of energy. However, in facilitated diffusion, the movement of molecules will only take place if it is facilitated or helped by a special protein carrier in the membrane. Facilitated diffusion can occur in either direction depending on the concentration gradient. If there is a higher concentration of the particular molecule inside the cell, the same carrier protein would then transport the molecules out of the cell. The sodium-potassium pump is an active transport mechanism. Three sodium ions bind to the protein channel and an ATP provides the energy to change the shape of the channel that in turn drives the ions through the channel. One phosphate group from the ATP remains bound with the channel. 
The sodium ions are released on the other side of the membrane outside of the cell and the new shape of the channel has a high affinity for potassium ions and two of these ions now bind to the channel. This binding again causes a change in the shape of the protein channel and this conformational change releases the phosphate group on the cytoplasm side. This release allows the channel to revert to its original shape and as a result the potassium ions are released inside the cell. In its original shape the channel has a high affinity for sodium ions and when these ions bind again they initiate another cycle. The important characteristic of this pump is that both sodium and potassium ions are moving from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. In other words, each ion is moving against its concentration gradient. This type of movement can only be achieved by the constant expenditure of ATP energy. The substances used as fuel by single-celled organisms include other smaller cells, particles of organic material, and large molecules that cannot pass through the plasma membrane. Many single-celled eukaryotes use a mechanism called endocytosis to ingest such food particles. In this process, the plasma membrane surrounds and engulfs the food particle. Cells use three basic types of endocytosis depending on the size and nature of the material to be ingested. Phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. If the material the cell takes in is particulate, such as a bacterial cell or an organic fragment, the process is called phagocytosis. If the material is a liquid, it is called pinocytosis. Some types of molecules, such as low-density lipoproteins, LDLs, are transported across the plasma membrane by receptor-mediated endocytosis. These molecules first bind to specific receptors embedded in the plasma membrane. The receptor molecules are concentrated in an indented pit coated by the protein clathrin. When sufficient target molecules accumulate in the coated pit, the pit deepens, seals, and is incorporated into the cell as a coated vesicle. Exocytosis is the reverse of endocytosis. This process results in the discharge of materials from membrane-bound packages that migrate to the inner surface of the plasma membrane, fuse with the membrane, and then release their contents to the outside of the cell.